All right, I'm recording. Just start, go back. Where do you want me to stand? Go back. Go back some more. <clears throat> <clears throat> Just say something. Hello. How are you today? Oh my gosh, Robert. This is my normal voice. I can talk louder or I can talk softer. Whichever one works better. Uh, this All right, Aunt Gladys, um, explain a time you got in trouble as a kid. Oh, uh, one time, uh, Mr. Ear, he used to have apple trees, in, you know, over in his field. And the boys, they, they would want the apples. Of course, he had a fence down the road, you know, to keep us out. But they'd put me over the fence, I was little, and tell, them, tell me to go get them an apple. And Mr. Aaron saw, so here he come down that road of Kitney. He lived next door to us. And so they, they run and left me over the fence with the apples. Of course, he went right on to tell Mama, you know, that I was over there stealing his apples. And I got in trouble. But the boys, they got all free. So that's, that's, that's one of my, uh, you know, times. And then a lot of times when Leader and Sylvester would come out there visiting Mama, I'd try to be ugly, you know, and, and say bad things. And Mama would say, now if you don't behave when they leave, leave you're going to get it. So I'd try to be funny, you know. And, of course, sure enough, when they left, I'd get, get a spanking. <laughs> and it didn't learn me a thing in the world, because when they come again, I'd do the same thing over again. <laughs> I'd tell, tell Sylvester that uh, his hair looked, you know, bushy and stuff like that. Of course, he thought it was funny, but uh, Mama didn't. <laughs> she wanted me to behave myself. <laughs> okay. Um, with the holidays coming up, what are some of your plans? Well, I really don't know. I plan to to put out some of my stuff, like my wood woodwork that I made that didn't get, you know, messed up too bad. But I I don't think I'm going to put lights around all the buildings because going up that ladder. Uh, moving so often, you know, to get a rain, rain it, it's kind of getting hard on me because um, I'm already got to my 83rd birthday. <laughs> and I think it's about time for me to slow up because I, I usually have to put about 3,500 around this house to, from one end to the other, you know, and that's a lot of lights. And then, but anyway. I'm not going to put up as much because uh, my greenery that I put around the winders and it got wet from the hurricane and rusted all up and the bows got 
all matted together, so I had to carry them to the dumpster. So, and I'm not able to buy new ones for or rain it. So, they would just have to have a candle inside that didn't get fouled up. <laughs> okay. Um, describe your favorite meal that you associate with home. Uh, this home or Mama's home? It can be either one. Just growing up. Well, I, I used to like, you know, everything that Mama put on the table because it was either uh, smoked meat from the uh, smoke eyes or either cream and, and butter that we had a kai and uh, we, we had the clabber and plenty of milk and butter and and Daddy, even he, he even growed uh, sugar cane one year, and they made molasses. And I can't remember too much about how they did it. Only I can remember the horse, the mules walking around and around the pot. I read they were squeezing the juice. I don't know. I can't remember. But anyway, that molasses it was so good. They'd fix it and put it in the uh, large fifth. Uh, Pine Lord cans and store it upstairs in the hall. And in cold mornings, when we Mama make hot biscuits, you know, and had plenty of cream, she she'd send some of us up the stairs to get a jar of molasses. Had a big spoon, we'd bail it out of that and put it in a jar. That was good. That was good eating. And a lot of times we'd have a smoked ham to go along with it, and plenty of eggs, cause we had a few chickens and. But anyway, that that was good. And then after I got married, uh, seafood was good. Uh, shrimp, you know. And my young ones, they, they love shrimp. And they also love the oysters and the fish, too. But I think shrimp was, was the main thing because back here, uh, when Joey was home, I fixed a, a big dinner for him, and I cooked shrimp and had cabbage and everything that I thought he liked. I had a whole table full of food and baked ham and had turkey and whatever. But Chrissy and her family was late coming. They didn't get no shrimp. <laughs> and man, that was that was bad. That was bad news for them. But anyway, they knew what time that we were supposed to eat. And if they don't get here on time, that you know, you might get left out on something that you like. But there was plenty of other food on the table. But the little fellers, they, they wouldn't eat because there weren't no shrimp. There weren't no shrimp left. <laughs> but anyway. Okay. Um, what activities do you and other people do for fun around here? Well, I don't know what other people do for fun, but I get out in the yard and get my hoe and rake and a, a garden tiller and, and work outside, and I think that's fun. I'm not one for going on vacations. I don't uh, uh, take trips, you know. Once in a while, the girls will, will get me to go with them somewhere, but... Uh, I don't know anything I do and, and my most fun part is my camera I guess I can say that's my my fun part taking pictures wouldn't you say so Dorothy yeah. <laughs> but, but anyway I only have uh, I'm starting on my 159th album so I would say that that might be my fun. Okay. Um, what's the most adventurous thing you've ever done? Or the most risky? Well, I reckon the most that I've ever done was a couple of years I went shrimping with people on the boat. <laughs> that was real adventurous. That was fun. 
go right there and he sleep in the daytime and I'd sit there candle wick or do something with my hands and of course I'd take naps not every night and then and then at night when we pull back if we had a pretty fish I'd get back there in the kitchen <laughs> clean that old fish up and cook him back there about two o'clock in the morning stew up some taters and get some tea and they get on that radio and say, guess what she's a doing? And she's back there cooking tripe, potatoes, and tea. Of course, them other boys, they called us the love boat. <laughs> I told him, you really got it made, man. <laughs> okay. That, I guess that was... Um, how could you tell if someone is either from here or not by how they speak? Well, you could, you could tell by they, the way they talked, you know, and uh, they did, I, I don't know. I've had, had a lot of people to ask me if I'm from Hyde County. <laughs> I tell them no, but they, they say they I sound like it, no, but I don't. Some slang language that you use. Like for a sofa. Oh, well. Um, now, when I was growing up, I was telling the people that come help me on my highs about Daddy. You know, he he had some good words, like the Pizer. They wouldn't know what in the world was that. I said, that's the porch. <laughs> and I don't know. There's a lot of different words. I can't. I can't remember them right now. But anyway, what about um, features? Do you know what those are? Yes. They used to come, and of course they didn't come here too much, but they went up shore and stayed stayed up there. Swim night, you know, on the sandy parts. That's probably most of it. The sandy places is washed away, nay, from all the storms and everything. But what would you? What they call a skillet? A skillet. That's a frying pan. Right. Is it called a spider too? Yeah, a fry a spider. A spider, a skillet, and uh, I can't think too too much about all the, the odd words that we used to have, <laughs> but uh, we know what it meant. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's all the questions I have for you. So that's it. Well, uh, I don't know. I've, I've written. You probably won't get a good grade on this. <laughs> oh, no. I will. No, I will. They might get a big laugh. <laughs> okay. It's okay. Okay. I forgot to, to tell her about uh, the time that when we built a little bit more onto our house, uh, uh, my nephew, he used to come spend the night with Wesley and Andy, and we didn't have the back rooms, you know, we just had the, uh, the, the framework up, it wasn't partitioned off, you know, just a frame, but I had beds back there, and they'd go back there and they'd get, get on them beds and play, play, and they wanted to jump on them, and I, I was cooking supper one day, and Charles, he was over here, and it, they were back there playing and a jumping and I went back there I had I was peeling potatoes and I had a potato in my hand a butcher knife in the other and I went back there and I told them I was shaking that knife I said if you youngers don't get out of here and stop that jumping on that bed I'm gonna flog every last one of you and every time I see Charles now he wants to know if I flogged anybody lately and if you don't know what flogging is, that, that means a whipping. <laughs>
That's it. Okay. That's a good word. Alright. Explain a time you got in trouble as a kid. Well, I can remember when I was in school, in the second grade, that I went out with all the kids to play, and the bell rang, and our recess was over, and we weren't ready to come in, so we were a little late getting into the um, school. And when we got to the door, the teacher had her paddle in her hand, and all of us had to line up, and as each one went by, we got a paddling in the hand, and that just tore me up. I just cried and cried. Um, with the holidays coming up, what are some of your plans? Well, I guess my biggest plan is to have a big dinner for the entire family. And that's the biggest job. Otherwise, I'll just sit around home and do my daily tours, try to decorate a little bit, and enjoy what I can. Describe your favorite meal that you associate with home. Well, there's no one here but just uh, John and I, or maybe Willis or Ashley or someone like that. My favorite meal is really chicken and dumpling, or chicken and pastry, I call it, with potato salad. And my favorite cake is either probably uh, coconut. Not that it'd be chocolate. If I could only have one, it'd be chocolate. So. Um, what activities do you or others do for fun? I don't have anything special that I do for fun. I excite. I enjoy working in my flower beds when the weather's okay. And just walking around, looking at things. Bars. Any special thing. I don't have anything special. Okay. What's the most adventurous thing you've ever done? I guess by the most adventurous thing I've ever done, we took uh, my oldest daughter and the middle daughter, I believe, was with us today. We took all the grandkids, which is seven of them. Uh, this was before Ashley was born. <laughs> So the one only had five. Took all the grandkids to Disney World. And we had one little suite, which had a one bedroom, a little kitchenette, and then a little, I guess you would call it like a, a sitting area. And we all lived in that one room area for five days. We were ready to get back home. <laughs> But it was fun and start off with, but it was getting on our nerves at last. But, but that was adventurous. And also, John and I, later in life, we uh, went on some bus tours with tours with um, some uh, people that get up a crowd and wanted to go sightseeing. We went to Tennessee and we went in New York. And we enjoyed that and being with the crowd. And then how could you tell um, if someone is either from here or not by the way they speak? Well, a lot of us that's older have some slang words that we use that other people don't recognize. But mostly you would know them from the senator voice. Um, my doctor tells me we sound like we're from Hoyt County. He calls it a bit of slow with the accent. To me, it's just science normal. That's all I've ever known. That's it. Okay. All right. All right. Please state your name and where you're from. My name is Rebecca Hartman, and I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. Okay. Um, could you describe a time when you got in trouble? Um, I'm trying to think of just one time. There's so many. Um, there's one time I remember 
I was with my sister at the playground. This is really random that it came to mind. Um, and for some reason I just wasn't happy with her. And so I bit her arm. <laughs> <laughs> like we were just playing and I was angry so I just bit her arm and then she went and told my mom and then I got in trouble um and got a spanking we didn't really do time out we just did spankings except when I would say something towards my parents like nasty or um like talk back to them and I'd get my mouth washed out with soap which was not fun um my mom would use the the dispenser soap but then she'd also use like the bar and you'd like bite down the bar and that was just awful. <laughs> so I don't know if that's what I had to tell you more, but that's like the first ones that come to mind. So. Okay. Um, what is a meal that you associate with home? Um, well just um, a staple of Baltimore is crab, like the Maryland blue crab, and so that's like the biggest thing that I think of. Um, if you don't have crap when you come to Baltimore, it's just something that you don't, you don't want to do that. Um, it's like every time I go home, we go out for crabs or have crab soup or just something along the lines of that. Um, but then we also, for Thanksgiving, um, we have like the turkey and, you know, sweet potato casserole and all that stuff, but we have baked oysters, which I feel like... Not many people have, but I think they're really good, even though I don't really like oysters by themselves. Um, and then at Christmas time, we have ham, but we have broiled shrimp um, in Old Bay. Old Bay is another, like, big Baltimore thing that people cook with a lot, and it's just, like, a seafood seasoning. Um, and we have that in North Carolina. It's just not used as much. Like, we use it in everything. Um, so those are definitely the things that I would associate What do you or others do for fun in Maryland? Um, hmm. Go get crabs. <laughs> so it's really, it's so like an experience. Um, but other than that, um, a lot of time we just go and play games at someone's house. Like, I'm just going to high school is what we did a lot. Um, there's a lot of parks in the area that I grew up in. Um, with lakes and so lots of opportunities to go like walking or biking um, you can get canoes and like paddle boats you can rent those on the lake or down at the inner harbor in Baltimore um, you can do that too um, I mean <laughs> I guess that's it that sounds kind of lame but um, yeah okay um, what is the most adventurous thing you've ever done <sighs> The most adventurous thing I've ever done. Um, gosh. Sorry. Okay. Like adventurous as in crazy? I guess, like risky <laughs> crazy. Um like, the only thing that comes to mind, I feel like, isn't even adventurous. Um, which would be stealing a mug from a coffee shop. <laughs> but for me, like, growing up, like, that was like, oh, no, 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 you don't steal. And, like, I didn't take it back. Because if I did that at home, my mom would, like, literally take it back to the store or the restaurant. Um, the most adventurous thing... I feel like in college I did a lot of crazy things. Um, it's all like a blank. I did travel to Germany by myself, like with people from high school. And so that's kind of adventurous, I guess. Like I, the, the girl I stayed with um, was like host family type things. And so she was like big into the ice hockey team there. And so we literally like, I was there for two weeks and we went to like five or six ice hockey games and one of them we rode a double decker bus like five hour bus trip to the away game because she was like that big of a fan so that was a big deal for me um we drove to france too because we're really close to france to the border um in youth group like in high school middle school like i don't know why but the cool thing 
was to like just do the craziest things you could ever do. So we'd have like jello nights and like shaving cream nights and so we'd like literally like you'd take a packet of jello and water and like swish it in your mouth and mix it and like spit it out or like so I did that and um shaving cream battles. It was just ridiculous. Um yeah. That's all I can think of. Okay. Uh with the holidays coming up, what are some of your plans? Oh well, um I'm going to Maryland, going to Baltimore with my parents. Um and we always have like a big get together like most families do. And I mentioned earlier the dinner. Um and honestly, like, we just have, like, weird traditions. Um, we like the Jones sodas that you could get at Panera, like, a really long time ago. Um, that's something that me and my friends always did for fun to hang out with we Panera. Um, but we always go out and get Oreos and Jones sodas for whatever reason around Thanksgiving. And then we always watch right Christmas at Thanksgiving. Um, it's, like, a family tradition. And we, like, I've seen it so many times we can quote it by heart and, it's just ridiculous, but it's so corny. It's such a good movie. Um, and I'm sure I'll be going down to the Inner Harbor. We always make a trip down there. Maybe not for crabs, because they're out of season right now. Um, but yeah, just spending time with family. Have some fires in the fireplace. Um, give some money to some nephew who live in Delaware. So that'll be fun. Um, how would you be able to tell if someone was from Baltimore or whether they were just visiting, if they weren't from the area? <laughs> well, if you go in the Inner Harbor, you can definitely pick out the tourists from the regulars because all the tourists are going to, like, the typical places, like the Crab Shack or, um, the Cheesecake Factory, and they always have, like, their cameras, and you can just tell because they don't know where they're going. They're like, ooh. Um, they have just no idea and like in Baltimore like you don't waste any time like you go from point A to point B like that like you just like don't lollygag and a lot of tourists um like when I brought friends up they're just like slower I guess like I, I don't want to be like we're mean but we are kind of aggressive and like driving and walking and going to places um I guess another thing would be well accents obviously like everywhere geographically there's different accents but in Baltimore you have the Baltimore Huns and they have like a distinct um just different words that they say and um so that's another thing what was the other part of the question well it was based on how they speak based on how they speak um <laughs> well if you ever go to a restaurant they always ask for um like in Baltimore we don't have sweet tea you just ask for tea and they'll bring you out unsweetened tea. So that's like a big difference. Like when I brought friends up and they order sweet tea and I forgot to tell them that we don't have it. They like bring you out a cup of like iced tea and packets of sugar and that's your sweet tea. Um, and it's not very good. Um, certain words. Um, well, first, um, I already told you this, that People from Baltimore say Baltimore like it's spelled with a D, um, but everyone else that's not from the area say, says Baltimore. And I, I don't think I've ever said Baltimore. Um, let's see, what else? We don't say y'all, we say you guys, um, which sounds really Yankee, but we just don't say that. Um, Orioles and the Ravens are really big too, um, and if you don't know about like the rivalries with the Steelers and the Ravens and the Orioles and the Yankees, then like everyone in the area knows that that's a big deal, whether you're an Orioles fan or not, like you just know you're from the area, a lot of people don't realize that it's such a big rivalry, because I mean, Pittsburgh isn't that close, if you think it'd be with Washington, um, or like New York with football, but it's not, um, so that's a big thing. Um, else. Does that help? Mm -hmm. okay. um, I don't know if I need to go on. Fine. How would you say your accent has changed since coming to college? 
Yeah, um, I say y'all. <laughs> like there are there are times like when I go home, I can feel myself going back into like speaking more like I used to. But when I come back down south, or if I'm talking to someone who has a really thick accent, like I hear myself bring it out more, and I don't even think about it, like it's just easier. Um, like even now, I can hear myself saying things, and I'm trying not to control it. Um, but I would say like my words. I guess it's like shortcuts, like a lot of the things I used to say, I've shortened. That's kind of how like the South is. Um, like y'all and um, I'm trying to think of certain words. Like the way like even words instead of word, words, like I just, it's like shorter in my head. I don't know. Um, it's kind of like slang, I guess. And so I guess I'm just more lazy with the way I speak instead of like lazy eyes instead of I or by. I've noticed I say ba and ah, because I used to say bye, and that just sounds bad. Um, so, yeah, I would say that definitely picked up the culture. Um, was it hard for you to adjust when you first came down? It was. Um, in like a joking sense, like my friends would pick on me for sounding like a Yankee. Um, even though I refuse that, like, Maryland's like the Mid-Atlantic, it's not the North, it's not the South, um, or the Mid-Atlantic, um, but, yeah, it was tough because, like, my roommate would say some things to me, and there were, like, multiple times where I remember saying, I'm sorry, what? Like, could you repeat that? And I just, like, couldn't understand what she was saying because it was so, like, short, and, like, she talked really fast, like, it's almost slurred. And so that was really tough because I felt bad, but I didn't want to just, like, say stuff. Sometimes I did. I would just say things, not knowing exactly what she was saying because I didn't want to keep asking her what she said. Um, so that was tough, just getting used to the way people do talk. Um, and then I, like, found myself gradually picking it up, like, because I was the only one who sounded different from everyone else. And so I slowly, like, part of it was a conscious thing. Like, I would say certain things different, like, y'all was more of a conscious thing um because I didn't want to like stick out I guess um and so now when I go home I get picked on because I sound like I'm from the country and from the south instead of um from Maryland <laughs> so I guess it's kind of like a, a catch-22 thing um so yeah it was hard at first but I feel like my freshman year I was like so southern and I've like found a good balance between how I used to talk and um, how I talk now. It's like a happy medium in between really southern and really northern. Um, so I don't feel bad anymore about it. All right.